Well, with temperatures starting to rise, and trust me, it was very hot here today, we're starting to transition into that late spring, early summer type of heat. So I figured what better time than now to go ahead and discuss with you the 10 designer fragrances I plan on reaching for the most this summer. Stay tuned. Now with that said, I do have one quick honorable mention and it's not really just one, it's more so of a line. That being the Bulgari Aqua line. Here we have Aquamarine, Aqua Amara, the original Aqua, which is newest to the collection. And then my personal favorite, Aqua Atlantique. I didn't wanna really draw out a spot here on the list because I know I'm gonna reach for these. I mean, when in doubt, I always go for this. This is one of my favorite summer fragrances. Uh, ever since I got it two or three summers ago, I always wear it, you know, a decent amount during the summer. But now I have multiples in the line with the original being the newest and Marine being the second newest to the collection. Obviously, I'm going to spend some time with them this summer. If you like salty, aquatic, beach type of scents, these three are going to be the way to go if you're looking for a much more blue version, basically a marine version of Dylan Blue, then Aqua Atlantique is going to be the one for you. It's the strongest performer. They all get great compliments, especially Aqua Atlantique. But let's jump into the first one. So this is actually a newcomer to the collection. I did pick this up from Kingdom Fragrances. I believe they still have a few bottles left, 40 some odd dollars. I'm talking about Ultra Red Man from Paco Rabanne. That very strange, almost stapler-like bottle because of the way you squeeze it to spray it, which it does spray a lot. Man, but does it smell good. Look, I haven't smelled Ultra Zest in a long time. Uh, I smelled a friend's bottle. It's been forever. Uh, it seems like forever. Anyways, it is very close to that. It has that orange peel, sweet type of you know warm spice that ultra zest is known for um, i know it's blood orange that's in here and they have some praline vanilla stuff like that to add the sweetness but up top i get this beautiful citrus peel orange peel type of smell with this underlying spice and there's not really any spicy notes there but i do get a little bit of a spice that warms it up that evokes the color red for sure and so far with the testing i've done with this one performance is no joke it's not some room filling fragrance but i get so far i've been getting about eight hours on my skin until it becomes a skin scent and projection's been pretty stellar in the first two hours uh more testing to come on that i'm gonna spend a lot more time with this one but it's the one i've spent the least amount of time with in this video that's why it's the first one i'm talking about they're not necessarily ranked but i guess essentially level of excitement they're ranked but uh not necessarily, because I'm pretty excited to wear this one too. So I guess they're not really ranked. But if you haven't gotten your nose on this one yet, the hype is real. I understand why it's been hyped up. Uh, it's damn good. It's powerful enough. It's long lasting enough. It smells great without being overly synthetic. It's, it's a lovely smell. I'm gonna be wearing it at the very least a handful of times this summer. Paco Rabanne, Ultra Red Man. Next, this one's kind of considered an odd one. I did a review on it last summer. I did pick it up early last summer. And uh, the odd factor and uniqueness of it is what makes me like it so much. It's basically like watery almond. Some of you may know what I'm talking about here with Guerlain L'Homme Ideal Sport. Now, I haven't worn this a whole lot. I did wear it a handful of times last year to do some testing and do a review on it. But I gotta say, in the line, it's kind of the black sheep of the line doesn't really get a lot of love a lot of people find it's a bit strange which it I, I can attest to why it's considered to be strange because it's a watery aquatic scent that has a dominating creamy bitter almond because that is the thumbprint and signature for this line that it's it's all about almond 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 however you say it whatever is your cup of tea potato patata tomato tomato but it's interesting it's a little bit of citrus up top but not really much it's really all about this watery note smell up top and almond it really dominates this fragrance a little bit of woods later on but pretty linear for the most part watery almond it just sounds strange 
to say out loud. It's, it, I'm sure it sounds strange to you guys, but don't knock it until you try it. It is the black sheep of the line. It does get the least amount of love. The EDP, now the Extreme, the Cologne, uh, the Lintense, they tend to get all the love. Hell, even the EDT and Cool get more love than this one but it's worth sampling. They do have carded samples out there. It's one that you can try before you buy just by getting a sample. Uh, that was how I tried the EDT and that was how I tried this one. I got carded samples first and that's what made me buy a bottle and start collecting the line. And if you try this one out, it may end up being a nice little hidden gem for you this summer as well. Watery Almond, Loam Ideal Sport from Guerlain. So there is a new flanker to this already out. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, my buddy Justin, Stay Fresh Production, shout out to you Justin, told me that it's a bit more herbal and he doesn't, it's not quite as enjoyable as the original. So until I can get my nose on it, I can't judge it either way. But for me this summer, I'm still looking forward to wearing Profondo, last year's flanker in the Aqua de Gel line. The new one being Profondo Lights, a flanker to the flanker. Like they did prior with Absolute, they made Absolute Instinct, which was underrated in my opinion. I did a full review on that one last year too. Really like Absolute Instinct. I'm gonna pull that one out. I'm gonna wear most of the fragrances in this line, if not all at some point during the summer. But aside from Absolute, I'll probably spend a little bit more time with this one than even Absolute, which is kind of my favorite at this point, because it's so much more aquatic. It really screams beach hot weather, summertime. This fragrance screams that. It is the bluest of the blue when it comes to this line and performs. If you're looking for a summer fragrance that is a compliment magnet, a little on the synthetic side, don't get me wrong, it's got some newer synthetic chemicals, Aquazone, stuff like that in here, which was specific to this fragrance at the time of its release. It performs, it can grab people, it smells great out in the air. And that's, Kind of the knock for a lot of these fresher fragrances in the summer is people are always looking for performance, performance, performance. Long lasting and pro heavy projecting. That seems to be the biggest thing I hear about in the comments. Well, long lasting, heavy projection, and smells great. Very befitting of the season. Summer performance in a bottle. If you're looking for one like that, look no further than Aqua Dijo Profondo. I will be pulling this bottle out pretty frequently this summer. Essentially, Polo Blue mixed with Dior Sauvage. It's kind of how I would put this one. There is a dominating cypress note in here as well that adds a bit of a sharp herbaceous component with the Ambroxan that's in here. I am talking about Ralph Lauren's Polo Deep Blue Parfum. Personal favorite of mine. I actually wore this to my stepson's graduation the prior summer, last summer. So I do have some Pretty good memories tied to this one. It's just a lovely scent. I mean, if you like Dior Sauvage and you like Polo Blue, this takes the best of both of them and puts it together, essentially. It's a very lovely fragrance. It's not a beast, but it's definitely pretty long lasting. It's a six to eight hour fragrance on my skin, even in the hottest of weather, anywhere from six to eight hours. It's not an overwhelming projection, but it is a very present projection, arm's length type of stuff for about two hours. You will get some attention with this one. You will be able to get some compliments. Uh, it's a pleasure to wear. It's very easy to wear, obviously, because Dior Sauvage, while polarizing for the most part, very easy to like, easy to wear, and Polo Blue, one of the most easy to like and easy to wear fragrances ever created for men, to be completely honest with you. And this is the amalgamation of putting those two together, essentially, is how I look at it. Always have, always will, because that's pretty much what the scent profile dictates. When you smell it, you will get both of those fragrances. I'm confident that's what they were going for. They made Polo Blue even, even more mass appealing and essentially made it an Embroxen bomb. If you don't like Embroxen, you won't like this one, but if you like Embroxen like I do, you like blue fragrances, stuff like that, which the blue fragrance guy pretty much. I will be pulling this one out. Personal favorite of mine for the summertime, Polo Deep Blue Parfum. Relatively new to the collection. I did do a full review on this one not that long ago. It is one fragrance that I have been pretty excited to pull out for the summer. This is another great performer for those of you looking for a great performing fresh fragrance. Bentley for Men's Silver Lake, the Reflective Fingerprint Magnet. 
They're starting to show up at discounters more and more. Fragrancebuy.ca is where I got this one from. I want to say I paid like 46 bucks. I had somebody in the comments the other day say they spent 40 some odd dollars on it as well. I think that's a good price point for this one. Yes, not as cheap as a lot of the Bentley fragrances tend to get, especially all the other ones in this line. It's essentially an Aqua de Jo smelling type of fragrance that really, really performs. Flooded with amber wood, really helps this thing push, really gives it some strong longevity. The power is there from that amber wood. You get some violet leaf in here, you get some citruses. Kind of has that Aqua de Jo Ascenza type of scent profile, um, which is extremely expensive because it's been discontinued for a while now. You'll spend a few hundred dollars trying to get a bottle of that, whereas you can spend between 40 and 50 at discounters and get a 100 milliliter bottle of this. And it's basically the same scent for the most part, and it performs about as well. It's an eight plus hour fragrance on my skin, probably on yours too if you give it a chance, and it definitely projects pretty heavy. Not a room filler, but it borders it. This one's one of the heavier projecting fragrances in this video. I'm very seasonal with my fragrances. I did wear it several times since I got it, but I've really been kind of trying to hold back a little bit to really wait for this weather to really heat up and really see what this thing will do when I'm sweating pretty often outside, on my walks, when we go hiking, stuff like that. I'll be reaching for this one pretty regularly this summer as well. That's why it's in this video, and it's one I suggest you try if you can. So I think it's a damn good release from Bentley. It's Bentley for Men, Silver Lake. One of my personal favorites in the summertime. Um, a lot of you know I love the Prada Lone line. I hold it in very high regard because I love iris fragrances. And this is the best one for summer in my opinion. It is Prada Lone Low. This is a big 5.1 ounce bottle, baby blue back. It basically takes the Prada Lone DNA, takes some of that spiciness away, brightens up the opening with some fresh and crisp ginger. It basically makes it a light blue fragrance with soapy iris. It's kind of how you can look at it. It's such, we gotta smell it some more. Such a good fragrance. An iris lover's summer fragrance. That's exactly what this is. This is my favorite iris based summer fragrance. That's why it showed up last year in some of my summer videos and that's why it's showing up in this one this year. This is, it's such a good fragrance in the heat. It really is, especially when you're hankering for a nice soapy powdery iris fragrance. This, like I said, my opinion, my opinion alone, the best summertime hot weather iris fragrance out there. And there's a lot of good ones, don't get me wrong. I like Valentino Womo Aqua, the discontinued fragrance. Um, Dior Homme O, very good as well. 2012 formula Dior Homme Sport, another really good fresh summertime iris fragrance. But to be honest, which I don't think they can hold a candle to this, it still performs very well. Every bit of six to eight hours, still projects about as heavy as the original. The performance, the performance did not take a hit to freshen it up for the heat. One of the best summer fragrances out there, in my opinion, for me and my taste. I'll be reaching for this one at the very least two or three handfuls of times this summer, just like I did last year, because it's damn good. Iris lovers, you need to own this for the summer. Pratolome, low. It just wouldn't be a summer designer video without Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue O Intense. So, I don't know what I could tell you about this one that I haven't said before, because if you're not getting that great a performance from it, I'm sorry to hear that, but for me, it is an outright fresh beast. Saltier, more astringent type of smell directly off of skin. It can be a little off-putting at first, but the trail in the air, how this one smells in the air, is what makes this a superstar. That's what makes this an A1 compliment getter, powerhouse fresh fragrance for the summer that gets a lot of love in this community. It's for good reason. When you walk by somebody, they're gonna say you smell good more times than not if they were gonna say anything at all because it's a damn good fragrance. It smells fantastic in the air and it's eight to 12 hours depending on your skin. I've had people tell me they get 12 plus hours. I get in that eight to 10 hour range, which is way more than enough in the heat for me. Uh, it really projects in the heat. Um, the amber wood in this one, same thing. It gives it that staying power. It gives it that pushing power. Longevity and projection. Hmm. Man, this is some, some good stuff. 
if there's one fragrance to get in the line for as much as I love the original, I do think the original smells a little bit better than this one. If the original could have this one's performance, it'd be the greatest summer fragrance in history to me. But this one smells a little bit different, a little bit, like I said, a little bit more salty and astringent. It stings a little bit, the nostrils a little bit more. It's a lot richer directly off of skin, smelling it close. But in the air, not too many can hold a candle to it in the summer. Another one that if you're looking for performance, looking for compliments this summer, it's time to get your hands on a bottle if you haven't yet. Try it at a department store, get a sample, something, but try it. Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. Oh, intense. Definitely the greenest fragrance on this list because of the mint that's in it. Uh, it's still citrusy, still watery and aquatic. Uh, I mean, hell, aqua's in the name. It's a Zorro Chrome Aqua, my favorite in the Chrome line. For good reason. It's a solid performer, six, seven hours type of type of longevity. Above average to slightly above average type of stuff. Not a heavy projector, but gets the job done. Moderate range, arm's length, hour and a half type of stuff. When you walk by somebody in the first two hours, they'll smell you. Uh, whether they'll say anything, that's their prerogative. But it is a very pleasing scent. The original's DNA is there, but that mint kind of adds this green cooling nature to it it's lovely in the summer it really is it's not too synthetic of a mint but of course it's not a natural mint leaf or a spearmint oil or anything like that at the same time like i said performance is solid it's not weak it's not a beast it's right in that sweet spot of getting your money's worth it's not real expensive but it's not a cheapie at the same time 40 to 50 dollar range for a 100 ml like this this bottle came from kingdom fragrances last summer not sure if they have any in stock right now. You can always check from the link that's in my video descriptions. But uh, like I said, definitely my favorite in the line and one that if you try, may end up being your favorite too. If you haven't tried Aqua yet, yes, I know Pure is great. Yes, I know Extreme is great, but you might be missing out. Get your nose on this one if you can this summer. You may end up wanting a bottle of Chrome Aqua. One of the newest additions to my collection, and yes, this summer I will get the Eau Fresh Flanker. I have smelled it. I do really enjoy it, and I'm going to get it. But for the time being, the love affair has been continuing with Y Eau de Toilette from YSL. I love this stuff. It's just so bright and fresh and crisp, and even though it's synthetic, it just smells so damn good. Oh man, God, it smells good. Gets compliments. Solid performer, just like I was saying about Chrome Aqua, six to seven hour type of stuff. Relatively average to slightly above average projection. Now, it doesn't perform like the EDP, but that's why I got it. I didn't want it to perform like the EDP. The EDP is the EDP. I wanted something a little lighter, a little fresher, but the same scent. This is a little less sweet, a little less cloying, obviously less powerful in longevity and projection because that, that's a monster, the EDP. Like I said, the love affair continues. If you've been watching me in the last several weeks, you know I've been talking about this one. I've done a full review on it. It's been featured in a few videos, weekly rotation, stuff like that. I'm loving this stuff. I'm actually going to spray it again. It will get heavy use this summer. Even when I get the Eau Fresh Flanker, it's still going to get heavy use because this is definitely one of my favorite additions to my collection in the year 2021, if not one of my favorite additions to my collection ever. Why EDT? Don't knock it until you try it. Last but not least, it's pretty much understood. I didn't really need to put it in the video, but I decided to put it in the video anyway. I mean, it's my favorite damn fragrance. It's Invictus Aqua from Paco Rabanne. For those of you that don't know or are new to the channel and haven't seen a tester from the Invictus line before, that's why it says the name on the front, because it is a tester bottle. This is my favorite fragrance. <sighs> Aquatic, powdery, citrusy, woody, a little salty, marine. It's, it checks a lot of boxes, a slightly above average performer. Compliment magnet for me. Um, like I've said before, I'll say again, no other fragrance has gotten me more compliments than Invictus Aqua. Uh, definitely my favorite fragrance in my collection. Could it potentially get knocked off its throne? Yeah, absolutely. One day, even something I already have, the you know, the love affair may change with this one from another one. Y-E-D-T might end up being number one one day. You never know. But for the time being, I'm a pretty consistent guy for the most part. And uh, this has been my favorite fragrance for quite a while now. And it's one that I strictly pull out in the summer. Because any other time of the year, I've got Invictus or Invictus Legend for that. Or the one I never wear, Invictus Intense. But 
aqua. It's just so good. I've got a bunch of fragrances that smell like it because I just love the DNA. I can't get enough of it. This summer, I'll definitely be wearing this one quite a bit. That's Paco Rabanne, Invictus Aqua. Well, that is the 10 designers above $40 that I'll be reaching for the most this year, including my honorable mention of the Bulgari Aqua line. And until next time, do me a real quick favor, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, because I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. What are you looking to wear this year? What's gonna be heavy in your rotation? What's gonna be the main players in your collection for the hot weather? Let me know down in the comments. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the fragrances I, I featured in this video and you give them a spray now, I don't know. There's a chance you might thank me later. Have a good one, guys.